Hey everybody, Bass here. Today I'm going to talk about the various module patterns supported by the TypeScript compiler, how they work, and how to decide which one to use. So let's get started. As usual, the source code will be available on GitHub and the links will be in the description. So we have a very simple three file project over here. We have a file log.ts that contains a single function that logs log to the console. And then we have a file called print.ts which logs print to the console. And then we're going to use these two functions from a third file called main.ts. Let's look at the simplest way of doing this without any module pattern. I'm simply going to reference these two files into my main.ts. And now I'm free to use these functions. Now to compile all these files into a single JavaScript file, I'm going to run the TypeScript compiler with the dash dash out option and specify the name of the single JavaScript output file. You can see that the generated JavaScript file contains the code from all three files. Now let's run this code to see how you would use it. I have an index.html. I'm going to insert a script tag and refer to this outer.js file. And if I view this page in the browser, you can see that the console logs out the log message and the print message, which is what we would expect. Now if you look at our single output.js file, you can see that the function names are exposed on the global scope. This results in global scope name pollution and to prevent this, TypeScript offers something called internal modules. Internal modules are basically JavaScript singletons that have the same effect as a namespace. Now I'm going to wrap these functions up into a module called loggers and export the function from the module. I'm going to do the same for the other file. Now these functions are no longer exported to the global scope. And if I want to use them, I have to refer to the module loggers and then the function name. Now I'm going to recompile the file. And you can see that the generated JavaScript follows a module pattern where we extend an object with members that we export from the module. Finally, if you run this, you can see that it still works. Now let's talk about external modules. External modules in TypeScript exist to support the two key ways of specifying and loading external JavaScript file dependencies from a JavaScript file. So if all you want is a single JavaScript file, as we have been doing till now, then it is not relevant. Traditionally, dependency management between JavaScript files was done using browser script tags. But that is not very extensible as it is pretty linear. And when you're programming in JavaScript for the server, for example, for Node.js, you don't even have script tags. So two patterns have evolved for loading JavaScript files from JavaScript files, one for the browser and one for the server. The reason for having two module patterns instead of a single one will become clear after we've used them. To support loading external files, we need a module loader, which will be another JavaScript library. For the browser, the most common library used is Require.js. For the server, Node.js comes with an integrated CommonJS module loader. Now let's use AMD to load log.ts and print.ts using Require.js as our module loader. I already have Require.js downloaded and added to my bundle folder. When you use CommonJS or AMD, each file is a module, so I've removed the internal module that I created in the previous example. You are free to define an internal module if you want to, but it adds an extra level of complexity and indirection in this simple example. Now as each file is a module, I'm going to export these functions from the file. I'm going to add the export keyword before the function keyword, and that will cause these functions to be exposed. Now to use these functions, I'm going to delete the reference comments because I don't need them anymore and I will import the file as a module. And this is the syntax for that. I'm going to import the log file as well as the print file. And to use them, I'm going to specify the external module name that I just imported, followed by the function name. Now 
Now instead of floating outer JS, I'm going to load my module loader, which is required JS. And I'm going to specify an entry point, which is main.js. To get this to work, I need to compile my TypeScript files with the AMD option. And now if I run this, you can see that it still works. Now let's examine the behavior a bit more. If you open up the generated JavaScript for main.ts, you can see that it specifies a dependency for log and print according to the AMD module specification. So what happens at runtime is that index.html is loaded and that causes requires.js to be loaded and requires.js observes the data dash main attribute and downloads main.js for us. And since requires.js was already downloaded, it defined a couple of functions such as define for us. And since that is the first function that we're calling inside of main.js, requires.js finds out which files main.js depends upon and starts downloading them asynchronously. And you can see that all the dependencies of a particular file are downloaded in parallel. This is what AMD stands for, Asynchronous Module Definition. Since on the web, latency is much bigger of an issue than network bandwidth, it's better to have multiple network re requests sent out simultaneously instead of having them in series where latency cascades for each file to be downloaded. And to reiterate, what makes AMD possible is the fact that all the dependencies are listed at the top of the file as an array. Now let's look at the other external module pattern, which is CommonJS. Since CommonJS is designed for code that is going to run on the server, and since we're going to run in Node, we no longer need index.html. Additionally, migrating TypeScript code between CommonJS and AMD requires no code changes. If you are migrating JavaScript code between the two platforms, it would be much more involved. But since we're using TypeScript and the module definitions are generated for us by TypeScript, you do not need to worry about this anymore. In this way, TypeScript provides better code reusability within a JavaScript server and a JavaScript client. The only thing you do need to change is a compiler flag, and I'll simply replace AMD with CommonJS, and I'm good to go. And now I'm going to execute this code on the server by passing main.js as an argument to node, and you can see that it still works. Now let's look at the generated JavaScript. Since on a server file system, network latency is not an issue, it is better to load a module when we need it instead of loading all our dependencies upfront as we did with AMD in the browser. So this means the generated code is much simpler. I'd like to mention that require is a global function provided by Node.js environment, which is based on the common JS specification. So to recap, we learned how to merge all our TypeScript files into a single JavaScript file using the out compiler flag. Additionally, we learned how to create internal modules using the module keyword. And we learned how to utilize external modules based on the AMD and the common JS pattern using the module compiler flag. And as usual, if you enjoyed this video, click like and don't forget to share. Till next time, may the force be with you.